In this video, we're talking about logarithmic differentiation, which is just like regular differentiation, except that before we differentiate or take the derivative of both sides, we're going to take the natural log of both sides and then take the derivative. So the reason that we would do that is because sometimes it'll be easier to take the derivative if we've taken the natural log of both sides first than it would be to differentiate normally. So for example, in this problem, we need to find the derivative y prime. And we have this function y is equal to the square root of x times e to the x squared minus x times quantity x plus 1 to the 2 thirds power. And if we were going to take the derivative of this normally, we would need to use product rule where we have three functions, square root of x, this exponential function, and then this x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. So it would be a lot of work using product rule. We'd have to use chain rule also, of course. But we can also use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative. So let's look at how. The first thing we want to do in any logarithmic differentiation problem is we want to take the natural log of both sides. So we're just going to say on the left, natural log of y. And on the right, we're going to take the natural log of everything on the right-hand side. Now our goal is going to be to simplify this right-hand side using laws of logarithms. So the law of logarithms that applies here, remember we know this formula where if we have the natural log of a times b, for example, right, two functions multiplied together, a and b, inside of this natural log function, that's going to be equal to the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. So in our particular problem, we have three functions multiplied together within this natural log. So we're going to have essentially natural log of a plus natural log of b plus natural log of c. So we want to rewrite this as the natural log of the square root of x, that being our first function, plus the natural log of our second function, e to the x squared minus x, plus natural log of our third function, quantity x plus 1, raised to the 2 thirds power. Now to simplify this first term, natural log of the square root of x, we need to remember the formula that tells us that the natural log of x to the a is going to be equal to a times the natural log of x. So in other words, when we have an exponent on this x variable here, we can pull that out in front of the natural log. Well, remember that the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. So this is really just going to become natural log of y on the left still. And over here, we have natural log of x to the 1 half, which is the same as 1 half times the natural log of x. Now before we can simplify this second natural log, we want to remember the exponent rule, which tells us that we can separate this exponent because we have the difference here. We can call this the natural log of e to the x squared e to the negative x. So we've just separated the exponent. We had a positive x squared and a negative x that were added together. And our exponent rule tells us that we can multiply these terms together, keeping the same base, but separating the exponents. So we've got the exponents separated here. Then for this third natural log here, we're going to use this same rule to bring the exponent out in front. So we're going to get plus 2 thirds times the natural log of x plus 1. Now we're going to keep everything the same on the right hand side except this second term here. Notice now that again we have two functions multiplied together inside the natural log, e to the x squared and e to the negative x. So we go back to our first formula, natural log of a times b, and we're going to write natural log of a plus natural log of b separating these two functions. Now whenever we're taking the natural log of an exponential, those two things are going to cancel with one another, leaving us with just the exponent. So we're going to get this natural log and the e to cancel, leaving us with just x squared. Here we're going to get the natural log to cancel with the e, leaving us with just negative x. And now we've simplified the right hand side to the point where it'll be really easy to take the derivative with respect to x. So what we're going to do now is use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So when we take the derivative of the left hand side, again with respect to x, not y, the derivative of natural log of y is going to be 1 over y, but then because we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we have to multiply by y prime or the derivative of y. We could also write it dy over dx. So we have y prime, and then on the right, taking the derivative with respect to x, the derivative of natural log of x will just be 1 over x, so we're going to get 1 half times 1 over x. The derivative of x squared will be 2x. The derivative of negative x will be negative 1. And then the derivative of natural log of x plus 1 will be 1 over quantity x plus 1. So we'll get plus 2 thirds times quantity 1 over x plus 1. 
Now our goal is going to be to solve for y prime, but before we do that, we want to go ahead and simplify the right hand side as much as we can. So 1 half times 1 over x, we'll call that 1 over 2x when we multiply the fractions together, plus 2x minus 1, and then here we'll multiply the 2 thirds by the 1 over x plus 1, and we'll get 2 over 3 times quantity x plus 1. Now we've simplified the right hand side, all we need to do is solve for y prime, which we can do by multiplying both sides of the equation by y. If we multiply both sides of the equation by y, we're going to get y and 1 over y to cancel with each other, leaving us with just y prime on the left hand side. So multiplying through the whole thing here by y, what we're going to be left with then is y prime is equal to, and we'll just put the y out in front, and then the rest of our right hand side. And finally, because we want our derivative function in terms of x only, and because we have a value for y that's in terms of x, we can plug in the original function for y, because we have y equals this whole right hand side, so we can take this right hand side and plug it in for y. So then our final answer for the derivative becomes the derivative of y, or y prime, or dy over dx, is going to be equal to, and here we'll say square root of x e to the x squared minus x times quantity x plus 1 to the 2 thirds power, multiplied by the rest of our right hand side here, 1 over 2x plus 2x minus 1 plus 2 over 3 times quantity x plus 1, and this will be our final answer for the derivative of the original function y. So that's how you use logarithmic differentiation to find the derivative of a function like this one.